Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I would like to welcome everyone to <clears throat> learn about mater women's maternal and child health effort, uh, SAMA efforts in Sudan. Uh, joining me today is an expert panel of great partners and collaborators uh, from the US and a regional expert from Ethiopia. Uh, with no further ado, thank you very much everyone for joining us. And Lina will take it over from here. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nahla. Um, hi everyone, I'm Lina and I am a, a volunteer for SAMA. Um, and I'll be introducing the panel here today. Um, so to begin, Maggie Close, um, has been uh, working on behalf of UNICEF USA uh, with her master's in global health and social justice from King's College London. Maggie has been working alongside UNICEF USA on managing health grants, providing strategic guidance to development in UNICEF's health funding programs. Uh, since the offset of the pandemic, Maggie has been supporting UNICEF's health and emergencies team and specifically guiding their COVID-19 response team. So thank you for joining us. Um, Dr. Cherry Evans uh, is here to speak about uh, Jay Trigo's USA efforts. Um, Dr. Cherry is a senior MNH advisor and director of Helping Mothers Survive at JH Pigo. Uh, with experience as a midwife, Dr. Cherry currently does work with various maternal and natal uh, care and childbirth training programs, providing technical leadership in maternal health for JH Pigo's country programs. Tashaud Saleh is a project manager for midwifery training programs in her home country of Ethiopia. She's done extensive experiences in program improvement, strengthening midwife and nurse competencies, and writing technical documents. Dr. Nada Fadul is an associate professor um, at the University of Nebraska's Medical Center, as well as an active member of multiple community organizations, including Sudan NextGen, where she is a co-founder, Sudanese American Public Affairs Association, and the Association for Sudanese American Professors in America. Dr. Nahla Gadala is an executive director of SAMA, and Dr. Um, Atap Usman is a physician, as well as a board member for SAMA. So next I'll be sharing um, a short video um, on helping mothers survive um, programs and some of the recent introductions um, in Sudan uh, since 2016. Is the sound okay? Sudan, 
ويتمنى لهم يعني كل خير في انه يعني كل ما يكون لهم فرصه سالحه زي دي يحاولوا يشوفوها احنا للسودان عشان احنا نقلل ما هو في ابدا. So now I'll be handing it off to Maggie Close to talk to us about some of UNICEF, uh, UNICEF USA's efforts uh, with child health in Sudan. Thank you, Lena. Hello to everyone on the line. As Lena mentioned, my name is Maggie and I sit on the global programs team at UNICEF USA. And today I will be giving you a brief overview of uh, UNICEF's response in Sudan and the situation for children. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So over the past few years, Sudan has continued to face protracted, complex, and intersecting humanitarian challenges. And people in Sudan remain extremely vulnerable to these emergencies. Deepening poverty is causing widespread malnutrition, flooding and recent disease outbreaks are upending lives and livelihoods. And education interruptions in both 2019 last year and 2020 have left 13 million children out of school. These hardships are threatening people's lives, denying children and particularly girls access to education, creating serious protection risks and giving rise to abuses and violation. Past conflicts in Sudan and neighboring countries have left thousands of people internally displaced or living as refugees uh, without access to basic support in and outside of camps. And while recent steps have been taken towards securing peace um, and opening the possibility for humanitarian assistance in previously inaccessible areas such as Darfur and Blue Nile, um, humanitarian needs remain high. It's estimated that 9.3 million people, including 5.4 million children, will require humanitarian assistance in 2021. High rates of child and maternal malnutrition are plaguing Sudan's most vulnerable people. Without a healthy start to life, we know that children are at risk of being affected by cognitive and uh, physical development delays, which threaten their opportunity for future growth, prosperity, and their ability to be contributing members of a society and a community. Stunting, which is at 37% among children under five, has showed little, little improvement over the last couple of years. Last year in 2019, global acute malnutrition rates were at 14% in Sudan, which is just below the World Health Organization's public health emergency threshold. And over 2.4 million children suffered from acute malnutrition with more than half a million children suffering from severe acute malnutrition. The situation for children and mothers is compounded by general low immunity, high levels of malnutrition in children, a lack of access to basic services such as immunization and postnatal and antenatal care, and a devastated healthcare system where only half of the facilities are functional due to the conflict over the last number of years. As you'll see on the chart on the right, under five mortality has decreased significantly over the last number of decades. In 1953, 197 deaths per every 1,000 live birth was recorded. And this number has dropped significantly to 58 in 2019. And while this does seem like tremendous progress, um, concerted efforts to address high neonatal and infant mortality rates are still needed more than ever. Um, according to a recent UNICEF survey, it is known that the coverage of immunization is low with only 42% of all children under five being fully vaccinated and affordable and quality health services are difficult to come by with only 24% of health facilities providing a full range of primary health care services. So you may be wondering what is UNICEF doing to address these large needs of women and children? Um, UNICEF is increasingly focusing its support on states and localities with higher levels of inequities in child mortality and stunting and a specific emphasis is being placed on reducing neonatal mortality and stunting and expanding immunization. To do this, UNICEF is working at the community level. So they're working with parents, caregivers, local leaders, government entities, and also um, local implementing partners to strengthen the healthcare system and services 
along the continuum of care. So that's from birth to adolescence, uh, also addressing the needs of pregnant women and mothers. With the goal of ending all preventable deaths and promoting the well being and development of children, UNICEF is ensuring high immunization coverage. They're doing this by procuring and distributing vaccines and cold chain equipment. They're also supporting the government in efforts to reduce a high prevalence of malaria. And lastly, they are supporting the training of healthcare workers in the areas of maternal and emergency and newborn obstetric care, as well as midwifery training. Uh, last year, over 13 million boys and girls were vaccinated against measles and 7.6 million boys and girls under five with oral polio vaccines. As malnutrition continues to threaten children as well, UNICEF is working to prioritize adequate nutrition and care practices during the first 1,000 days of a child's life, which we now are very formative years. Um, in terms of addressing malnutrition, UNICEF is supporting the identification, referral, and treatment of uh, SAM children and procuring nutritional uh, products and supplies, such as ready-to-use therapeutic food. Um, UNICEF is also improving the feeding and caring practices of infants and young children through the establishment of community level mother to mother support groups. So women are counseled and are able to share their experiences and best practices um, with other mothers, which encourages uptake and demand for these critical services. And we do know that over the last five years, the number of children who have been able to access treatment for SAM has doubled alongside the government's also scaled up response to the nutrition crisis in Sudan. So addressing the impacts of COVID-19, um, Sudanese communities are affected by regular outbreaks of cholera, of measles, polio, dengue, and most recently um, COVID-19. So in Sudan, poor infrastructure and meager resourcing have stretched an already fragile health system and rural people remain particularly vulnerable due to um, food and nutrition insecurity as well as economic vulnerability as well. And so one of UNICEF's primary health priorities during their COVID-19 response is ensuring the continuity of health services. So with interruptions in routine immunization services, um, viruses which, which have previously been eliminated or eradicated in Sudan have unfortunately begun to resurface. Last year, UNICEF delivered 7.1 million doses of oral polio vaccine um, for routine immunization services and 13.5 million doses of oral polio vaccine for mass campaigns. However, this year, thousands of children are missing out on vaccinations due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is worsening an already existing immunity gap that we saw there before. Um, so on August, 19, uh, August 8th, actually, vaccine-derived polio virus was confirmed in Sudan. And, and why is this such a big cause for concern? Um, as you may know, this strain of the polio virus is a result of low immunity and under immunization rather than any type of issue with the vaccine itself. Um, and to address this, you'll see two photos on the right hand side, UNICEF, uh, most recently in October 2020 delivered 10 million doses of polio vaccine to Sudan. Um, and UNICEF is working with the Sudanese government and the World Health Organization to boost immunity as well as protect uh, the world's most vulnerable children. And the campaign was also accompanied by a, so a social mobilization campaign, which um, encouraged families and caregivers to vaccinate their children, but also more importantly as well, um, address vaccine hesitancy and reduce misinformation. So while 2020 has posed significant challenges to families near and far, there are also certainly elements to be celebrated as well. Um, in early 2020, UNICEF reached children and mothers in South Jebel Mara, which has been inaccessible to humanitarian agencies and aid since 2009. I just have a short video to show you. So we're walking up to Kulong Banj in Jebel Mara to do a, an assessment but also to bring some basic uh, supplies for the school and for the clinic.
But this type of school, for sure, it needs also repair. And uh, as we can see, there are villages at the vicinity, and uh, so many children will benefit from the school. As we can see. In spite of that the people they are they have an access to food, but they are, they, there is a many challenges in accessing to the health uh, services. The children under five still they are suffering of this uh, uh, diarrheal disease, the worms. Even we, we see in the cases of the malnutrition. It's a, an open uh, shallow well, so for the time being we have not we are considering it as an unsafe uh, drinking water, but uh, it could be improved, it could be protected, and it could be also connected to some stories where people can then get water through. Uh, during my interaction with the uh, women and, uh, and community leaders, I realized that there is a number of child uh, marriage in the area. And uh, I think what we need to do is to raise the awareness of the community to uh, abandon this uh, practice. And so now UNICEF and their partners are working together to bring critical health services to every child in the hardest to reach areas um, to ensure that every child has a healthy and happy start to life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maggie, for this um, wonderful overview of some of the important work that UNICEF has been doing and some of the um, issues that are still a work in progress. Um, next, um, Dr. Nada Fadl will be speaking about um, some of the maternal child, um, so maternal child health in Sudan um, and giving us more of a broad um, overview. Do you guys see my presentation? Okay. Yes, we do, Nada. Go ahead. Okay, good, good. All right, well, it's my pleasure to be here with you today, and I really appreciate the opportunity to augment Sama's voice and programs in Sudan. Um, uh, as you all know, Sama has a very long history of doing amazing work in Sudan when it comes to maternal and child health. I'm not gonna go, um, is it in screen view mode? I can't really see if it's in presentation mode or not. Let yeah, I'm not going to presentation mode. Yeah, that's it. Okay, per perfect. All right, so I had, this is my outline for today. I was just gonna give a general overview of under five and infant mortality, but Maggie gave a very excellent overview for that of that. And then I was gonna speak a little bit about helping babies breathe and essential newborn care program. And why is that important? And at the end of the day, I was just going to talk a little bit about SAPA and our hope to partner with SAMA in augmenting the programs and the voice in Sudan. So Maggie already went through all of these statistics. Um, the situation is really bad in Sudan. It's probably even worse now with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the flood and all of the issues that Sudan has been facing, the economic crisis. So if anything, things might be actually worse in 2020 than they were in 2019. Uh, compared to the world, the infant mortality in Sudan is much higher, as you can see. It's 41 at the end of 2019. The world was at 28.2. Same for under five mortality, it was 58.4 in 2019, and the world was 37.3. And this is the data from the World Bank uh, data bank. So why do we need this program? Uh, I think it's not a secret to any of you that while under five mortality and infant mortality is really high, one of the most contributing causes to that is the newborn mortality. And it's estimated, although we don't really have good data, and that's the big problem with um, any initiatives in Sudan, is it's really hard to find ground level data, but it's estimated that maybe 50% of the under five child death and 
uh, 64% of all infant deaths are due to the newborn deaths that occur right after birth. And there's so many reasons why that's happening. Uh, but as you all know, sepsis, infection is a big part of that. Birth asphyxia are, is a big part of that, the infant not being able to breathe. And there's so many other contributing factors to that. So prematurity, low birth weight, all of these things can also contribute to making these problems even worse. And we inter anticipate that if there are skilled birth attendants uh, at the birth time, that can certainly make a big impact uh, on all of these factors. But unfortunately right now it's estimated that only 78% of all birth are attended by a skilled birth attendant and only 28% of these actually happen in a healthcare facility. And this is a big problem all over Sudan. Access to health is an issue. So a lot of these births actually do happen in the community and less than 80% of them are attended by a skilled birth attendant. And um, only 67% of birth deaths are actually reported or registered. So we don't really know exactly uh, what's the true problem at the community level, especially in areas where birth registration by itself might not be uh, taking place. So lot, not a lot of information, but as far as we know, the problem is big and it needs immediate attention. So what is helping babies breathe and um, essential newborn care general objectives? So the general objective is to train 48 community midwives, nurses, and doctors uh, on in-service neonate comprehensive package. This is a comprehensive package. It's a very well put together course that hopefully will make an impact by the end of the day. And as we saw from the video that uh, Lena presented earlier, SAMA has a track record of conducting these programs on the ground in a way that's successful, that's culturally competent, that is, you know, is making an impact already on other programs. So we do anticipate that this program is gonna make an impact inshallah. There will be also training of the trainer and that's aiming to improve the quality of care given for newborns in the first hours of life. So hopefully this will disseminate at a larger scale in the community level with this uh, training of the trainers. The specific objectives of the progr program is to facilitate implementation at the community level. So hopefully this will focus the attention in, of international community to neonatal recovery and it will improve and build the capacity of midwives to resuscitate the newborn and arrange for referral to advanced care if necessary, and also strengthen the mechanism and supply chain of recovery equipment to ensure continuity of this effort and hopefully sustainability. And the hope that these midwives will have the skills necessary to go and not only at the time of birth, but also afterwards to conduct follow-ups at the community level, you know, educate mothers on how to take care of their newborn and how to recognize signs of sepsis and signs of infection, but also at the time of pregnancy, how to educate mothers to, you know, with nutrition and self-care and baby care and all of these things so that at the time of birth, these problems could be prevented. So, um, Lots of aspects that they already spoke to. So improve and build capacity of midwives to care for newborns during the first 24 hours and support a specific plan of action to care for the newborn uh, during the first 24 hours of life, but also improve and build capacity of midwives to provide advice and guidance to mothers during pregnancy and after childbirth on the best ways to care for the newborn. And if there is a need for urgent therapeutic in intervention, these midwives will be trained on how to conduct these therapeutic in interventions, whether it's antibiotics, whether it's any you know, fluids or anything else that the baby needs uh, to help with av avoiding uh, death in this period. And afterwards, you know, sending the patient to advanced care uh, facilities where they can actually get the care that they need. But that immediate intervention is hopefully gonna prevent a lot of these deaths that are happening in the communities. So the target audience of this, as I mentioned, is mostly midwives, but also doctors and uh, other healthcare providers in 48 different, uh, sorry, 48 different uh, providers will be targeted. And the program will be conducted in 12 states. So the states are listed here. We're hoping to recruit you know, four uh, providers from each state to become these uh, training of the trainers. It's a seven days course. Uh, it's a very interactive program. It has lectures, it has working groups, it has workshops. Uh, there's practical training using mannequins and using baby dolls on how to conduct these procedures. There's gonna be role play, there's gonna be discussion. And even though these are very long days, it's eight hours per day, but we saw from the video previously that these um, 
trainee were actually very dedicated and very excited about this training. So they actually stayed long post their schedule hours uh, to take on advantage of these opportunities. There will also be a pre and post test to measure the impact of this training and how it's actually uh, making a difference. And lastly, I just wanted to say that we're very excited about this collaboration between Sudanese American Public Affairs Association. Although we're not directly involved with this program, but we're really happy to be here to augment that voice and spread it uh, among the Sudanese American community. So just a brief uh, uh, overview of SAPA's mission is to strengthen the well-being of Sudanese American communities, as well as organizations by increasing engagement through education, public awareness, self-empowerment, and positive contribution. Uh, we do that through leadership de development and providing the community with better opportunities and highlighting the, their programs. So we just had our annual conference a couple of weeks ago, and during that we highlighted the fundraiser that is currently conducted by SAPA, SAMA. So I advise everyone to visit the website and maybe not like if you could share the link uh, for donation, uh, because this is a time that we need our Sudanese American community to step up and support these types of program in the country uh, in view of the economic crisis that is currently happening. So I'm gonna stop here and turn it over back to Lena and thank you again for inviting me. Thank you so much, Dr. Nada, for talking about, for talking to us about this program today. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity and um, it's really exciting to um, think about the impact that it can have on um, maternal care and child care in Sudan. Um, so I'll be turning it over to Dr. Nahla to um, introduce uh, SAMA's Women's uh, in, in Maternal Health Program um, in Sudan. Thank you, Lina. Um, thank, uh, so I'm going to talk about SAMA's Women's Health Program in Sudan. Uh, it all started back in 2015 with uh, short seminars and presentations and contributions at the Ops and Gaini Specialist Association in Sudan. Uh, and then after that, we found a way to collaborate and partner with uh, Japaiko, uh, uh, and Cherry will talk more to that, and introduce the Helping Mothers Survive module. So the Helping Mothers Survive module is basically a, an in-service training module that we introduced in Sudan back in 2016. Uh, we also introduced the cervical cancer screening program uh, in 2017 and the child pop, uh, health program, which is a healthy babies breathe module in 2020. So the maternal health situation in Sudan is very dire. Uh, the data is very broad, depending on which report you read, where you get your data from and your source. I got this information from the World Data Atlas uh, for 2017. And the number is similar to what Maggie has shown us earlier. 295 women die out of every 100,000 live births. And this number is highly significant uh, when you compare it to other parts of the world, even like our regional partner uh, uh, neighbors and uh, you know, Middle East, EMRO. Uh, we don't even want to go and compare it to Europe where the number is just one. Or in America, I think the number is 14, but this number is really, really huge and significant. And we see that a lot of uh, our mothers are dying of preventable causes. All these causes are preventable if a skilled birth attendant is available to assist. Uh, maternal death from bleeding after birth con contributes to 28% of the report reported maternal mortality cases. And this is a report that was issued by the Ministry of Health, I think in, back in 2013. And we don't have any updated information since then, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, Preeclampsia and eclampsia is another cause of maternal death and birth complications in Sudan. So what SAMA did was in 2015, we initiated a collaboration with Japaiko. They have uh, simple, low cost uh, modules that train the midwives to become skilled birth attendants and to manage bleeding after birth. Uh, we introduced the and, and preeclampsia and eclampsia among other modules that they have. Uh, we introduced these modules in Sudan in 2016 
uh, where Japaico uh, provided us, us with the master trainers because their modules are um, a certifi certified training. Uh, you have to have master trainers to train your master trainers in the country. We trained master trainers back in 2016 in Jazeera State in collaboration with the University of Jazeera. Uh, we provided the simulators for the training and we tr uh, translated the training into Arabic to make it more practical for local use and to make it uh, easy to achieve, uh, to uh, learn for the midwives well, most of them don't speak English. The progress that we have made since 2016, after introducing the first module, which is the Helping Babies Breathe, uh, sorry, the Help the Bleeding After Birth module. Uh, so far, despite all the challenges in Sudan, we have trained over 1,400 community midwives in eight states. And we've been able uh, in 2019 to reach West Darfur, where we trained um, midwives in, uh, in Jinena. And this was a, an area that was really out of reach for uh, many years as well. Uh, we also trained uh, 50 midwives in Kadugli. Um, and this area was also one of the areas that were hard to reach before 2019 and before the revolution. Uh, other areas we trained in uh, North Darfur, in Al Fashir, uh, North Kurdufan, Al Ubayyid. Uh, River Nile, Kassala, Khartoum, and Al Jazeera, where it all started. We introduced the Helping Babies, uh, sorry, the Preeclampsia Eclampsia module in uh, 2018, again with co in collaboration with Japaiko, who provided us with the master trainers. We flew them over from uh, Uganda and they trained the Sudanese master trainers. And we trained over 700 midwives in the past two years and 137 master trainers who are mainly ops and gynae specialists uh, now are ready to deliver this training in Sudan. We delivered over 2,000 clean birth kits to those community midwives that we train. In 2017, Sam introduced the cervical cancer screening program by establishing a colposcopy unit at Soba uh, University Hospital and the unit was fully equipped by equipment donated uh, by SAMA. And then we went on to train the master trainers who are uh, physicians in order to train uh, midwives in the future. And the importance of this program came because of, of the significant uh, cases of cervical cancer appearing in the country. While we don't have specific data, but there are over 1000 new cases are reported annually and 745 women die from cervical cancer. And this can be prevented with early detection and prevention. In 2018, we uh, trained those uh, physicians on the VIA module, which is a very low tech and uh, simple uh, screening module developed by Japaiko. And it uses just um, it's, it's a visual inspection using acetic acid of the cervical uh, cells. And uh, we provided the simulators again and the training material. And we built the Sudanese faculty who are able now to deliver this training further to other health providers. Um, seven, three colposcopy courses to tr have trained over 165 specialists uh, over the past three years. And uh, we don't train any more uh, specialists in this area, but we are trying to uh, start use, uh, train, uh, providing the service of cervical cancer screening uh, starting 2021. This was the first faculty that graduated from the course. And in the center here, you see Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim. He's the champion of this program and he introduced all these uh, modules in Sudan. The program also provides equipment, surgical instruments uh, to rural hospitals, specifically the Jazeera where we started this program. We provided them with many of the equipment that they need. And most of this equipment was a kind donation from First, uh, First Health uh, Regional Hospital in North Carolina. Mm, like I said, I would like to acknowledge the uh, tremendous efforts put into this program 
uh, championed by Dr. Mohammed uh, Abdelrahim Ibrahim, who was uh, SAMA Women's Health Program Director for uh, over six years. Uh, he has uh, sort of stepped down his role now due to other commitments and, uh, and he wants to pass the candle on to another champion. Uh, and we, still, uh, we facilitate all this program on the ground with our full-time staff uh, in Sudan. So with that, I will um, end my presentation. It's a very, very brief overview of what we have been doing since 2016. And um, I'll take it back to Lena. Thank you so much, Dr. Nahla. Um, I believe we received a question regarding cervical screening in the chat box, if you'd like to address that. Okay, can you read it for me, please? Uh, the question is from uh, Neda Salvi, I believe. Um, the question is, is cervical screening available in Sudan locality hospitals or only in Khartoum? I don't know about the availability in the private sector. Um, there is no national program, as we know. Uh, the, uh, the ministry is working on developing that right now, um, as we've been we working with them for several years now to, to have a, a national program. Uh, there is colposcopy services in the private sector. There are uh, public hospitals that do have colposcopy services, uh, but I'm not, I'm not aware of any uh, specific screening services. SAMA is planning to introduce a specific screening service with our partner, uh, uh, Turkish Teaching Hospital, uh, starting in 2021. All right. Um, so next, I'll be handing it off to Dr. Cherry Evans, who will be talking to us about the SAMA and J. Uh, J. Trigo partnership in Sudan. All right, um, thank you very much for that. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I um, was doing a little dog management in the background, so that's why I was kind of fading in and out, but I think she's under control. Um, so let me know if you can see the screen. Um, okay. All right, are you able to see? Yes, we can see it. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, so for those of you who may not know, um, we've had a kind of a brief overview about the use of Helping Mothers Survive in Sudan. Um, Helping Mothers Survive is a suite of training modules to help all types of providers give the highest quality of care they can throughout the health system to both women and their newborns, um, not just on the day of birth, but for preeclampsia, eclampsia as an example, including antenatal and postpartum care. These modules are based on the latest standards of clinical care, and also they're based on the, the latest evidence for effective in-service training techniques. Um, so JAPAIGO leads the consortium of helping mothers survive. Um, there are um, global um, and local and regional members, but um, we work very closely with FIGO and ICM and also UNFPA. Um, UNICEF actually is a new uh, um, area for us. We have a, a project uh, delivering all of the BMONC competencies through Helping Mothers Survive and Helping Babies Survive modules. Um, so the very first module in the suite was bleeding after birth. And this is where our story at Chapaigo um, begins with SAMA. But before we go into the history um, with SAMA, I wanna share the evidence um, behind bleeding after birth and actually the, the learning approach. So as Nahla showed, the, the um, materials are very simple. They're, they're graphic. Um, and it helps with all levels of literacy, um, which it, you know, if you're at the community level, but all the way up to you know, midwives, nurses, and doctors, clinical officers. Um, globally, we train everyone throughout the continuum and we tend to do team-based training. So everyone is working together um, while they're learning and they also will be working together, especially for example, if there's a complication such as hemorrhage or convulsions from preeclampsia. So, um, we built the very first module in bleeding after birth, um, you know, based on that latest WHO guidance and also the teaching techniques, but we wanted to understand if we were effective at changing provider performance and behaviors um, to support them to give the highest quality of care. And actually, we wanted to understand if we 
um, would be able to change health outcomes, which is the holy grail. That's what we're always looking to do is improve outcomes. Um, so we uh, designed a research study and we actually combined uh, bleeding after birth with helping babies breathe. Um, and we wanted to do that because we recognize it's often the same midwife or nurse alone caring for both at that moment of birth when the woman is most likely, of course, to have a postpartum hemorrhage and a newborn suffer from asphyxia. So what we did is we provided a one day training at the facility level for bleeding after birth. And then a few months later, we did the same at helping babies breathe. And we did this in Uganda through a Saving Lives at Birth funded project. And we were in 125 hospitals um, in 12 remote districts. Um, and so our evidence showed after a one year project, um, postpartum hemorrhage dropped by 17%. Um, as a researcher, I was surprised it didn't go up because of course, if you teach people how to recognize something, they're gonna see it more often. Um, retained placenta went down by 47%. So that's, that's the evidence behind the helping mothers survive approach. Um, you can see though, since we coupled it with helping babies breathe, um, we decreased fresh stillbirth by 34% and early newborn death by 62%. So the approach is a very powerful one. Okay, so um, now to our shared history. So in late 2015, um, there was a member um, of SAMA. Uh, I'm not sure if she was a volunteer. Um, Nahla may be able to tell us, but Asma Hamid joined a Baltimore-based training in bleeding after birth. And I think it was our first US-based launch of bleeding after birth because we wanted to share with interested um, INGOs and faith-based organizations that work in developing countries, um, we wanted to share this new module. So Asma was one of the, um, uh, the trainees and she, apparently was very excited by it and went back to, to Nala and said, this is something that we should pursue. So fast forward a little bit, and as um, has already been expressed and explained in 2016, we had those four Japaiko trainers, and thank you very much for putting their faces up there. They are uh, friends of mine, and we work throughout the globe together, but Japaiko trainers from both Tanzania and Uganda. Um, and if I recall correctly, um, that training of uh, trainers um, was during a postpartum hemorrhage project um, for the annual scientific workshop in with a collaboration between SAMA and the Sudanese OBGYN Association. So Nala already gave um, from that activity um, the numbers of master trainers and clinical mentors and providers who were trained just in that activity. And we have a similar picture, it was a different one, but the trainers are there sitting in the front. Okay, so, and as a result, my understanding, and this is, I think, um, in part what Nala was showing, in bleeding after birth, 168 master trainers were eventually trained in nearly 1,500 midwives. So that's an impressive accomplishment by SAMA um, and with plans to reach all 26 states. So, um, You've seen these images already. These, this is where I got the numbers. So the coverage that Sudan has achieved through the work with SAMA has been tremendous. And I will say, as far as I know, the best globally reach for bleeding after birth. So there was more. Uh, and as Nala said in 2016, um, there was translation of bleeding after birth and the helping mother survive preeclampsia, eclampsia into Arabic. And in 2016, um, I got to meet Nala and Professor Alsinos, who had come over from Sudan uh, in Baltimore. I remember that quite fondly. I was not sure when the preeclampsia, eclampsia training began. Um, so I'm not sure if 2017 was correct from, from your slide, so I may be incorrect on the start date, um, but there were just most recently plans for the helping mothers and babies survive module for threatened preterm birth care. And I know that that ended up getting put on hold as things became somewhat challenging this year for all of us to implement programs. Um, so, in addition to these modules, Japaigo has developed with our partners three other modules. Um, we hope that these will be of use to the great work SAMA has done um, in Sudan. They may not all be appropriate. Um, the Essential Care for Labor and Birth was actually just launched um, last year, and it's now become the most requested um, module for, for training um, and master training events. And the other two complicated labor and birth is actually now called Prolonged and Obstructed Labor and 
vacuum assisted birth and their companion modules. Um, and those are actually being ready to be piloted in Tanzania. So at that point, we will have almost completed the set of BMONC competencies. Um, we have post-abortion care under development as well. So this is our map of the world, and, and this is just documented. Um, we know that this approach has really scaled much farther than we can capture um, because there's no obligation of, for anyone to tell us where they have provided training. These are open source materials. Anyone can download them and use them. Um, we do strongly recommend people are trained and mentored in their first training as we had done in, um, in Sudan in 2016. But we know that people download the materials, teach themselves how to teach it, especially if they're already helping babies breathe trainers, for example. Um, and they just read the materials and then turn around and teach them. So we are pretty convinced we have well over 100,000 providers trained. Um, and we are in, um, at this point, the last count was 73 countries. I need to change that slide. Um, so all of this information and the training materials are available on the website um, for anyone to use. And I thank everyone for your attention. Back over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cherry, for talking to us about these uh, truly impactful efforts that um, Japago has been doing um, in the countries that truly needed the most. And um, it's truly impactful work. Um, yeah. I'll be... Lena, just before we go to uh, Tisha Wait, I just wanted to comment. Thank you, Jerry, for sharing that map because, I mean, this brought tears to my eyes right now because when I saw that map in 2015, Sudan was not there. And I shared that map with our board members in an email and I said, I'm going to put Sudan on that map. So thank you very much for sharing that map. It's really heartwarming for me to see that map there, Sudan on that map. And we are so pleased that Sudan is on the map. Yes, and I will still keep on with you until we have a Japaiko office in Sudan. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so now on to Tashawit to talk to us about her experience with uh, maternal and child um, care training programs in Ethiopia. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, shall I share the slide? Uh, Tishawit, can you raise your voice a little bit, please? Okay. Okay. And you have the ability to share your screen if you wish. Uh, for our viewers, Tishawit is joining us from Ethiopia. And she said uh, she doesn't want to put her video on because of the network um, might put, take her off. Uh, thank you very much, Ishawit. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I try to share uh, my slide. Uh, I already shared for uh, Dr. Nala. If it is possible, I try to uh, share my uh, slide. Tishawit, is there anything we can help you with? Are you having trouble sharing your screen? No, I'm uh, going to share her slides. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, I. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I can uh, start. I'm happy to uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, our experience in Ethiopia, uh, uh, a life saving project. Uh, 50,000 Happy Birthday project, which is uh, uh, supported by International Confederation of Midwives and donated uh, by uh, Lardar Global Health. And it is also supported by Zapaygo Trainer and also uh, American 
philatric society uh, the outline uh, uh, will be uh, i want to say something about ethiopia midwife association it is one of uh, the stronger uh, association in ethiopia uh, our association is uh, established uh, uh, this is uh, the outline about the Ethiopian Life Association and uh, about the life-saving project in Ethiopia that is helping babies survive and helping mothers survive. Uh, in this regard, uh, how we approach uh, this uh, implement the project, the results achieved, uh, and also uh, the major challenges and lessons learned and conclusion. I will, I will uh, share these experiences. Uh, regarding to the Ethiopia Midwife Association, uh, it is uh, established in 1992 and a member of ICM since 1993. And uh, it has uh, more than uh, 60,000 midwives uh, in Ethiopia. Among these, uh, 7,000 is a member. And uh, the goal is contributing to uh, reduce in maternal and child morbidity and mortality in the country. The vision is to see very, every woman born and their family have an access to standard midwifery care. And the mission is to promote and enhance the expansion performance uh, of midwifery professionals through adopting quality and evidence-based practice, adhering to the code of ethics and empowering the professionals to reduce maternal, neonatal, and child health mortality and morbidity and improving your sexual and reproductive health in Ethiopia. And uh, Ethiopian Media Association has uh, a four uh, strategic directions. Uh, these are uh, capacity building, advocacy and representation, networking and partnership, research and public publication. Uh, these are some of the points uh, regarding to the association. And now I uh, start the uh, life-saving project which is known as 50,000 happy birthday project uh, this project uh, is uh, uh, implemented in uh, five regions uh, in ethiopia a large five uh, regions uh, like amara romea uh, tigray uh, southern nationalities and addis Ababa, the capital city of ethiopia uh, uh, it is also uh, implemented in uh, the pre-service, the health facility, 100 hospitals and 50 uh, health centers. And also in the pre-service or health science education institution, 30 uh, health science education institutions uh, were uh, involved. Uh, that is... Uh, the geographical coverage of uh, this 50,000 happy birthday project. And the main objective or the goal of this project is to equip and train uh, the midwife to uh, save a life at birth. Next. Uh, our approach or uh, methodology is uh, we started by uh, organizing a launching and planning meeting to create awareness among stakeholders. Uh, there was a two days meeting. We start our, our launching uh, workshop in our office. And uh, then after uh, making that, uh, the launching workshop was uh, in its region. And the thing uh, was discussed with regional health bureau uh, officials and the department, the head of department of the teaching institutions. Uh, and then the training uh, were delivered. Uh, the master training de delivered at Addis Ababa nationally. Uh, the trains came from uh, each region. And then the master trainers train the, tra the training, the trainer uh, at each region. And totally, uh, we have uh, uh, more than 24 uh, master trainers. And uh, we have uh, more than uh, 350 uh, hundred uh, uh, TOT trainers. 
after training uh, this uh, uh, master trainer and TOT trainer and then after return to their respective facility they train their colleagues on site uh, the tutors or instructors train their students skill lab and other uh, trainers one thing that is a CLS uh, learned at this point we include uh, the MNCS experts from Ministry of Health and Regional Health Bureau and the department head of uh, the training institutions are included in the master trainer and in the TOT trainer. This makes uh, uh, the activities go smooth uh, and also sustain. All educational materials and tools, including practice register templates, were provided at health facility and health science education institutions. We received educational materials and simulators from Dardar Global. I want to uh, thank at this point. Cascading training where happened at, uh, at the clinical area on site, as I said before, and the students and other uh, midwives in the clinic uh, and in the hospital are, were trained. And there was a, a follow-up uh, uh, mentoring at the clinical area. And at the time of the training also, the new trainers are mentored at the time of training. That is also our, our best practice. Uh, and there is a follow-up. At the time of follow-up, uh, there was uh, a coaching on uh, the clinical, the clinicians, that is the midwife and the nurse. Most of the trainees were uh, midwives. Next. The other thing, uh, we held a performance review meeting at the middle of uh, the project duration. That makes uh, uh, an opportunity to share experience, including success, challenge, and solutions and lessons learned from each other, from the pre-service and in-service, and the hospital and from health centers. Uh, that was a good opportunity to learn from each other. The other important point is the project uh, has been advocated still now uh, with poster presentation at conference exhibition at different levels and also uh, advocated in mass media national mass media in ethiopia uh, and also uh, printed uh, brochures and stickers and we provided a technical support for uh, other partners at the time of uh, implementing hms and hds training uh, nowadays uh, our partner, uh, like uh, the Regional Health Bureau, Ministry of Health, and uh, AMRIF, uh, JSI, UNFP, uh, and also other developmental partners are adopted this method because uh, the Ethiopian Ministry of Health uh, gave uh, recognition for this approach. It is an innovative and very important. Uh, training methods. Uh, that is why our ministry also likes this uh, uh, method of training. Next. Uh, key results achieved. Uh, uh, trained midwives at health facility and health science education institutions on HMS and HBS increased. Uh, in the health facility, uh, they took three uh, modules uh, helping the mothers survive module the two module uh, bleeding after birth complete and preeclampsia eclampsia and helping baby breathes in the health science education institutions the instructor tour took five modules uh, these two modules of the helping the mothers survive and the three modules of helping the baby survive including the essential care for every baby and essential care for small baby uh, so they, uh, the number of uh, trained midwives increased. The other thing is uh, project intervention health facilities and health science education institutions introduced the low dose high frequency pedagogy and contributed, uh, this project contributed for maternal and neonatal health outcome. Uh, however, uh, it is not that much significant because uh, it uh, uh, stays for uh, near to two, 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 two years 
so uh, it increases visibility of the program and strengthens capacity of Ethiopian Midwife Association. Uh, next. These are uh, the uh, graphs that show uh, the number of trainees uh, in Ethiopia uh, opted to train its person in more than uh, an average of 3.8 uh, modules and totally uh, over 12,500 training uh, episodes. Uh, the first graph shows that uh, in pre-service training uh, by category and level of training. In the pre-service, we uh, provided the TOT training and uh, we support them to train uh, their students and the rest of uh, tutors in the school and also the lab assistances. And uh, uh, totally near uh, or more than uh, 200 trainees in uh, TOT and uh, 1,215 uh, 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 staffs. That is the teacher or the instructor and also uh, the lab assistances. Next. The uh, figure two shows that the in service that is the hospital, uh, midwife is working in hospital and health centers, uh, trained at uh, uh, champion level uh, and TOT levels. In the TOT level, uh, more than uh, 116 uh, midwife is trained and also uh, more than 1,000. Champion trainings are trained. We support in the champion. The champion trainings are trained by uh, their colleagues uh, who took the TOT training and the master training. And the, they are also supported by the uh, regional health bureau because the, health, uh, the regional health bureaus are trained uh, the TOT training and the master training. Some of them are uh, experts in this area. Next. Uh, these are uh, the second achievement that is the health facility and health science education institutions have introduced low dose high frequency. That, as you've seen from the picture, uh, this, uh, these are uh, from uh, the hospital and uh, the pre service. The two uh, right side pictures showing that the students are. Uh, were uh, trained uh, and exercising the low dose high frequency and more than 50% uh, of uh, uh, health facilities intervene this uh, low dose high frequency and more than 73% uh, 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 of midwives in teaching uh, institutions are uh, following this uh, pedagogy and Cascading trainings are still continued by other uh, partners. Uh, however, the, the project is uh, phased out. That is the, the, the best thing. Next. This project contributed for maternal and neonatal health uh, outcomes. The number of skilled births attended increased significantly in its health facility. When you compare with uh, the health facilities, which is not implemented, uh, the 50,000 happy birthday projects and facility-based maternal deaths are reduced, uh, and the stillbirths also reduced. Uh, newborn uh, deaths uh, decreased due to this uh, project. Uh, this is uh, revealed uh, from uh, the end evaluation of the project. And as you see from uh, the picture, midwife is carrying uh, uh, the baby and the mother uh, after delivery at one uh, health center. Uh, next. The other important point it increases visibility of the programs. Currently, the training approach is recognized by Ministry of Health, and uh, the Ministry. Uh, gave direction to all partners to give uh, this training methodology that the 50,000 happy birthday projects. Because the 
this uh, as i said before this 50000 happy birthday project uh, or the hms and the hbs training modalities are uh, uh, an innovative for our country and it is very interesting most of the partners are very much interested because uh, the day, the days are short and uh, it has uh, uh, very much uh, short time uh, so uh, different partners are adopting this uh, uh, competency based training uh, and so this this practice was produced uh, next there are some of uh, the, the challenges the challenges actually it is overcome uh, these are just uh, to to give uh, a learning opportunity for others uh, the first thing that we faced uh, uh, a challenge or lack of master trainer trainer at, uh, in ethiopia so uh, thanks to icm and larger global uh, they uh, provide an opportunity uh, to train to senior midwives so, uh, at, at master training levels. Then uh, the other challenge is uh, in receiving training materials due to uh, uh, a problem in the cargo. Uh, that is also one thing and less commitment among the health facility leaders to establish this mini skill lab. Uh, this was one of uh, the challenges. All these challenges are uh, uh, get a solution step by step by uh, communication, uh, the higher level officials in the regional health bureau and the facilities, the CEO and the director of the hospitals were communicated and they become uh, accepted to uh, implement this. Uh, important and innovative projects. Next. The other critical challenge was a security problem. Uh, that was also uh, one thing. Uh, the lesson learned is the project, is, uh, the project uh, has an impact on improving the knowledge and the skill of uh, uh, the midwives and it is, it, it is a cost-effective training approach as majority of the trainings was on site and also collaborate with uh, partners is mandatory to make smooth. It is very important. Without this collaboration, uh, it is difficult to cascade. To get great attention needs to uh, toward scaling up educational programs. In educational program also, it, it should be scaled up. And the health science education institution consider using a more efficient training design to address uh, basic uh, labs that are frequently performed and health facilities need more support. As I, as we've seen from uh, our experience through these uh, 22 months, uh, health facilities need support to establish this mini skill lab room. There is a problem on establishing this mini skill lab room because of uh, the building that is uh, not uh, that that is the scarcity of rooms to create these mini skill labs. Next. Uh, this is our as a conclusion uh, from uh, learning from this uh, project is there is a circle of uh, uh, circle of learning. That is the first thing, there is a new learning and then mastery of learning and then practice in pair and teams. At this point, at the facility and at the health science education institution, there is a practice coordinator that is uh, selected from uh, the, their respective health facilities and then clinical experiences uh, achieved and then improving the care. These uh, are all about the project that we uh, implemented from the uh, 50,000 Happy Birthday project. Thank you so much. I'm a Sagamala. Thank you so much to Shawat for sharing your experience uh, managing these training programs in Ethiopia and some of the important challenges and lessons that you've learned uh, from your experience. Um, I'll be handing it off to Dr. Afaf, um, who sits on the uh, board for SAMA, and she'll be talking to us about um, SAMA's efforts with child health.
Thank you, Lena. Um, Nala, should we share the PowerPoint? Do you have it? So basically, I'm going to be wrapping up um, and basically um, just um, probably repeating some of what have been said um, about um, SAMA's child health program. Um, and I did want to include a little bit of an Arabic translation for our audience that does not speak English, because last time we did this, we had feedback that, um, you know, a big population of, you know, Sudan and, and uh, Sudanese people um, speak Arabic. So um, I wanted to also include that just um, in, in my final remarks. Um, so um, healthy, helping babies breathe is, is you know, our biggest initiative um, in terms of um, the SAMA Child Health Program. Um, and I think that um, it, it's a really important initiative and it really demonstrates, you know, our core values, um, uh, the, the very core value of, of helping the children in Sudan, which has been, um, you know, a goal and um, a center value for us ever since we started um, the organization. Um, and then it also demonstrates um, uh, that we are investing in sustainable uh, projects um, uh, that bring education um, to the midwives and to the healthcare teams in Sudan um, and results in sustainable change um, that has a big impact um, in that the impact is not, you know, centered on one hospital or uh, centered on one clinic, but that the impact is um, translating into a bigger area and reaching areas outside Khartoum and outside um, the city um, and reaching areas that um, are far away and also have very, very limited resources. So, you know, other speakers have talked about this before, but really the situation in Sudan is, uh, is, is really, um, uh, really dire. Um, the uh, mortality is very high for live births. So um, here's a statistic that's a really frightening number, 33 out of a thousand live births. Um, and again, asphyxia is the leading cause. Um, so if I, I just want to talk a little bit in Arabic before we go to the next slide. Um, so we're um, about um, Helping Babies Breathe. Helping Babies Breathe, the name of the name is the name of the children. It's a educational program. سامة اللي هي المنظمة الأمريكية السودانية للأطباء بدأت البرنامج ده عشان تعلم القابلات كيف ينقذوا الأطفال حديثي الولادة معدلات الوفاة للأطفال حديثي الولادة في السودان عالية جدا للأسف يعني من كل ألف ولادة في 33 طفل بيموت فده رقم عالي جدا ففي كمية كبيرة للأسف من الأطفال حديثي الولادة بتولدوا بيموتوا واحد من أهم الأسباب لوفاة الأطفال عند الولادة هو الاختناق أو نقص الأكسجين فالبرنامج بتاع التعليمي للقابلات بيركز على أنه نعلم القابلات كيف ينقذوا الأطفال اللي عندهم اختناق أو نقص أكسجين والبرنامج ده هو برنامج عالمي عملته الجمعية الأمريكية للأطفال American Academy of Pediatrics وتم استخدامه في دول تانية دول محدودة المصادر or limited resource setting وضح أنه برنامج بيساعد على تخفض الوفيات للأطفال بمعدل 50% بالمئة فالجمعية الأمريكية للأطباء السودانيين قررت أنه تطبق البرنامج ده في السودان عن طريق تدريب القابلات so بدأنا في 2013 and الفكرة كلها أنه لما الأطفال يتولدوا يكون عندهم معدل أكسجين منخفض أو عندهم اختناق أو ضيق في التنفس نعلم القابلات كيف يدوم الإسعافات الأولية اللازمة اللي ممكن تنقذ حياتهم وتديهم الأكسجين وتديهم التنفس uh, so basically what I'm saying is that we started in 2013 um, and the whole idea is we were training midwives to recognize um, asphyxia, to recognize uh, breathing problems at birth and give the um, appropriate um, uh, the appropriate intervention. Uh, so we've had some challenges in expanding the training, of course, uh, but more recently we've been um, doing better. Um, so let's go to the next slide.
Um, so this is the numbers um, of what of the midwives that we trained in 2020. So in January 2020, we trained 17 master trainers uh, on helping babies breathe. And these master trainers will go out and train other trainers. And that's how we expand the impact of this program. Um, and this is very similar to what we did with um, maternal mortality and with training midwives on maternal health, which um, Nahla has talked about a lot. Um, and as you've seen, we've trained hundreds of midwives on maternal health. So the hope is that we can tr do the same thing with the help helping babies breathe. Um, and I think that um, our impact through the maternal program um, demonstrates that we're able to do the same thing in children in help helping babies breathe if we can get the funding. So really, you know, that's the, the, big, the big issue here. So, um, you know, this, uh, what we've talked about is very impactful and has potential you know, to save hundreds of babies' lives, but we really need the funding for it. Um, so we estimate a need of $20,000, and that's where your role comes in. Um, so I really urge you um, to donate to this program. Um, so I'm going to translate a little bit in Arabic. Um, so, برنامج التعليمي للقابلات إحنا إلى الآن دربنا 17 قابلة ال 17 قابلة ديل في مختلف أنحاء السودان على أساس إنه يكون التدريب ما بس في الخرطوم بس برضو في الولايات وفي الأماكن البعيدة وبكذا بنقدر نعلم أو ندرب عدد أكبر من القابلات إحنا عندنا برنامج تدريبي للقابلات في موضوع الولادة بالنسبة للأمهات بالنسبة للهمرج اللي هو البليدينج أو النزيف بتاع الولادة فقبل كده دربنا القابلات على كيف إنه يتعاملوا مع النزيف الولادة للأمهات وقدرنا ندرب عدد كبير جدا يعني مئات من القابلات في البرنامج بتاع النزيف بتاع الولادة فحاليا الهدف بتاعنا انه ندرب قابلات في انقاذ الاطفال او البيبيهات نفسهم فالبرنامج ده بدا ويا دوب دربنا 17 قابله لكن احنا محتاجين لمساعدتكم لدعمكم عشان ندرب قابلات اكثر والهدف انه ندرب مئات القابلات في كل انحاء السودان فتقريبا التقريبه والاستيميشن لل المقدار ال الدعم المادي المحتاجينه حاليا هو 20 ألف دولار وبالرقم يمكن يكون كبير لكن كل دولار بيساعدنا وكل آه تبرع من أي آه شخص بيساعدنا آه فإحنا عشان كده عاوزين آه نفتح أو, أو ندعوكم أنه تتبرعوا للبرنامج ده آه لأنه برنامج مهم جدا آه وممكن آه ننقذ حياة أطفال كثيرين جدا عن طريق تدريب ده um, so that's basically kind of what I wanted to say um, as, a, as an introduction to this program. Thank you for having me here and thank you for organizing this. Um, and I really hope that, you know, we have a positive impact uh, through this program and that we're able to raise funds uh, to help babies breathe and to save babies' lives. Thank you, Afaf. And uh, yes, برضو يعني حاضيف لك على معطاف إنه برغم ال ال COVID وبرغم ال ال lockdown اللي كان حاصل في العالم كله، لكن ساما في سبتمبر ألفين وتسعة عشرين، we used the window of opportunity between the two COVID waves. We trained بالرغم uh, من وأربعين قابلة في ولاية سينار، وبالتالي um, عندنا خبرة كويسة. في تدريب القابلات في جميع أنحاء السودان وعاوزين نقرر التجربة بتاعتنا بتاع تدريب القابلات لإنقاذ حياة الأم في برنامج إنقاذ حياة الوليد وعايزين ندرب 200 قابلة في سنة 2021 في ولاية سنار بإذن الله ودي الحوجة بتاعتنا الحالية ل 20 ألف دولار لتدريب 200 قابلة فأي دولار أي 5 دولار أي 10 دولار ممكن تتبرع بها الآن في الفيسبوك أو عن طريق الويب سايت بتاع سامة بتساعد في إنه نقدر ندرب القابلات ديل وزي ما شفنا التجربة بتاعة أثيوبيا يعني أنا عدعيت زميلتنا من أثيوبيا عشان نوري ونوضح إنه التجربة ممكن تتكرر في بلداننا ونحن أوريدي التجربة عملناها مرين بها لنا أربع سنين 
تدربنا أكثر من 1400 قابلة في السودان على إنقاذ حياة الأم من النزيف ما بعد الولادة ودربنا أكثر من 700 قابلة في تشنجات البتصاحب الولادة فأفتكر يعني عندنا تجربة كويسة عندنا مكتب في السودان عندنا موظفين عندنا فولنتيرز وده كله بأهلنا لأنه نقدر نواصل المجهود ونواصل العمل في أنه ندرب القابلات يعني هم القابلات أفضل ناس إنك تدربهم ليه لأنهم هم موجودين في هذه المناطق هم موجودين داخل القرية وهم اللي بيتعاملوا مع الأم وبيتعاملوا مع الوليد بصورة يومية وبعد شوية لينا شكرا thank you so much حاسة حاوري فيديو عن برنامج Helping Babies Breathe Peace and Now Um, I'll be showing a short video um, about the Helping Babies Breathe program in, in Sanar. الصوت يا لينا. Sorry, I was muted. ما في صوت يا لينا الصوت كويس ما سامعين ما سامعينه اه ام يو وونت مي تو شير ات افتكر عشان نركب السماعه اوكي اوكي ايوه كده حنسمع ايوه معلش اسفه كده سامعين؟ لا ما سامعين؟ Do you want me to share it, Lena? Uh, yes, please. I think that would be better. I'm not sure. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Maydulin Ali Noor, a doctor. I'm a doctor in the program of the Health Service for the Children. The program started in 2013. It was between the children and the children. امتد بقى شامل الرعايه الاساسيه للوليد اللي هدى بدينا هو 2017 الهدف من التدريب بتاع الغابلات انه يمكن الغابلات انه ينعشوا الاطفال ويتمكنوا من انه حتى الرعايه الاساسيه قبل ما يوصلوهم المستشفيات ونحافظ نحافظ انه نقلل نسبه الوفيات في المستوى المجتمع وبكده نحن نقدر نحافظ على جيل يكون كويس وغير غير مضاعفات للاطفال ويكون عندنا أطفال سليمين طيب البرنامج كان فيه جزئين الجزء الجزء النظري وبعدك في الجزء العملي فالفكرة فيه إنه يمكنوا إنه يقدروا يمارسوا يطبقوا كل التغنيات بطريقة ممتازة جدا ويمكنوا إنه يكون بطريقة سهلة جدا في المجتمع هنا من ليلة إنه إضافة للإنعاش الرعاية الأساسية بتشمل إنه كيف يستخدموا كيس التهوية والأغنية وإنه كيف يختاروها وإنه إنه كيف يقدروا يصنفوا حتى الأطفال وإنه المحتاج لرعاية مع أمه وإنه الطفل الثاني محتاج إنه 
مساعده بسيطه وانه والله بحتاج انه نعمل لي حاله للمستشفى عشان يتلقى عنايه افضل دي كلها عشان نخفضها نسبه الوفيات بتاعه حديثي الولاده بصراحه بنشكر سما لانها هي قدرت انه تساعدنا في انه نقيم البرنامج ده لو لها انه ما كان حيكون الدورات دي موجوده بدعمها متفاني من انه من توفير للمطبوعات توفير لكل معينات التدريب حتى من ضمنها الكوادر وتوفير استغرام وضعهم المالي و Shukran, thank you, Dr. Nahla. Um, and now uh, to finish off, um, you'll be giving us a quick um, summary um, and conclusion to this meeting today. Yes, well, thank you very much, Lina. I just want to conclude by thanking all our panelists, Maggie, Sherry, Neda, uh, Tashawit, uh, Afaf, and our great volunteer, Lina, for uh, helping me moderate and uh, the technical aspects of, of this presentation. Uh, I would like also to thank our audience uh, from around the world, whether you're joining us from the States or um, any part of the world or Sudan. And I would like to add what Afaf has said, Yani, um, I think your contribution to this program will be essential in the success of the program. Uh, what we have seen from Ethiopia, uh, the numbers are very similar to our numbers in Sudan in terms of the number of uh, people trained, whether they are master trainers or uh, community midwives. And I will just want to say and add to that, that I think we don't, uh, we did that with uh, much less resources than Ethiopia has. Ethiopia has great support uh, from the UN organizations, from international organizations. Uh, SAMA has uh, been able to accomplish that with our uh, donors, uh, our great Sudanese donors who have supported SAMA programs in Sudan for a long time. And we really want to appeal to you to continue that support for us to continue to deliver uh, these important trainings and these important and vital uh, development uh, basics in Sudan. Uh, having a healthy population will contribute positively and impactfully to uh, the development of Sudan in general. Uh, with that, I would like to close and say thank you very much and continue to um, support and donate to SAMA. Bashkur kul al hudur wa bashkur nas ali tamu maana lela wa adona min zamanum, Maggie, Utashawit, and Dr. Sherry Evans. ودكتور عفاف ودكتور نضا فضل والاستاذه لينا دكتوره المستقبل وهي متعاونه ومتطوعه مع سامة وبناشد كل الحضور في جميع انحاء العالم انهم تبرعهم هو سبب اساسي في نجاح البرامج اللي بتقوم بها سامة في السودان ومن غير دعمكم وتبرعكم ما كان كل البرامج دي تنفذت وما كنا دربنا العدد الكبير من القابلات في جميع انحاء السودان او في الثمانيه ولايات اللي قدرنا وصلنا لها حاليا واملنا في انه نصل اكبر عدد من الولايات وندرب اكبر عدد من القابلات لانقاذ حياه الام وانقياز حياه الطفل. شكرا جزيلا لكم ولحضوركم ولاصغائكم وشكرا جزيلا للزملاء اللي شاركونا تجاربهم في السودان وفي المنطقه. Uh, thank you very much, everyone.